Hi guys, I know you enjoy my series of videos profiling uh, different perfumers, so I decided to put one together for Cecile Zorokian, especially since she has a new fragrance out for Amouage called Royal Tobacco, this one right here. So in this video, I've got a top 15 list, all ranked fragrances. And they're from various houses. I know she's on a lot more houses, but I don't have those fragrances, but I ended up having 15 different fragrances. Of course, I also have one bonus fragrance as well. So if you're a fan of uh, Cecile Zorokian or you want to learn about her fragrances, this is the list for you. This is a top 15 list of Cecile Zorokian fragrances. Find out what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about a top 15 list of Cecile Zorokian fragrances. I've got plenty of fragrances here, various, you know, brands, but there's a few brands that she's done multiple fragrances for. Obviously, there's other brands that I don't have access to currently or have any of the fragrances, but as I was saying, I've got 15 fragrances here. It's a ranked list, um, so obviously my favorites are at the top. My least favorites are at the bottom. Uh, it's just when you put a list of fragrances together, you know, you, when you're, you know, profiling a perfumer, if it's ranked, you're going to put your favorite up at the top. I'm not saying these are all bad fragrances, but this is how I'm feeling. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first fragrance. Going to a house that uh, is very, very small, very, very small with the most unique bottles. So very, very unique bottles. I discovered the house back in 2019. I think it's 2019, maybe 2018. It's 2019, I think. This is a house called Soleco. This is Baba Yaga. You guys familiar with this? This is number 15 uh, of my top 15 Cecile Zorokian fragrances. This is how the bottles are. If you ha I want to watch a full review of this, I have a full review on the channel. You can go catch it. But we're starting off with this one. It's juniper berries, leather, cade, nutmeg, cinnamon, pepper, pink pepper, or pink berries, cloves, iris, bergamot, mandarin. To me, this is autumn in a bottle. It's got very herbal qualities, aromatics, lots of them. Of course, it's got the leather. There's warmth about it with some warm spices. And then, of course, there's powdery touches here and woodiness. So, to me, if you like the idea of autumn and dry fragrances with aromatics and some sweetness and citruses, and, of course, uh, spices, definitely try Suleko's Baba Yaga. It's uh, probably going to be a tough brand for you to get, but uh, it's definitely a unique fragrance where the experience is autumn right in your face with uh, the dry leaves kind of experience, uh, the earth and, uh, you know, the different um, weather uh, patterns we get in uh, the autumn. So uh, moving on to the House of Visitor, this is Cabaret Nocturne. This one to me is a animalic and musky tuberose offering. So, it's a very small house. I think they only have three fragrances currently, and this is the only one created by Cecile Zorokian for this house. If you like the idea of tuberose and fragrances and musky animalic tuberose, you gotta check this one out. So, this features tuberose, musky animalic notes, orange, powdery notes, sandalwood, tobacco, cumin, smoke, pink pepper, ginocord. To me, it's like picking up somebody at a bar, going and having sex with them, so it's you know, it's very, very uh, musky and it's got a animalic uh, qualities to it as well. So, uh, but it's in your face tuberose. So it's got that big tuberose going for it. And also the fact that this kind of takes me to uh, a kind of like a dirty animalic. What's the fragrance? I'm drawing a blank. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, Robert P. Gay's uh, Freca. I don't know if you guys know that fragrance. If you like it animalic and uh, musky, sweaty, but just like a fracas, you definitely try this one. It's Visitor Cabaret Nocturne. Uh, I'm familiar with the uh, fracas a lot. I have a bottle. I recently picked it up and I was like, wow, this smells kind of like fracas, but very, you know, dirty, musky, animalic. So you've got to be into that kind of sweaty, musky, animalic fragrance uh, styling in order to appreciate that one. Because on me, it's definitely very, very musky animalic with an overdose of uh, tuberose. And moving on to the next fragrance, going to the house of uh, Amouage. This is the first of several fragrances we've got from Amouage that Cecile Zorokian has created for Amouage. And also, if you haven't caught my interview recently for the launch of uh, Royal 
tobacco, go catch it. Uh, we speak about this fragrance as well. This is Silver Oud. So this is in the old bottle. This is no longer. They've moved them into bottles like this, the library collection, Opus collection. But the Silver Oud bottle is the darker bottle in comparison to this. The rest of the collection are brighter like this in the Opus library collection, but silver is in the black. So once again, we've got another animalic fragrance here. It is Oudi. It's very, very Oudi. Lots of Cipriol, lots of Castorium here with birch, guyac wood, and vanilla. For me, on me, it's an overdose of animalic notes. The Castorium and the muskiness is really, really prominent, and the Oud also is animalic here, so it's just an overdose. Eventually, it sweetens up, it dries down, and the animalics kind of disappear, but still, you're left with a very animalic Oud fragrance. Uh, it's a little challenging for me to wear. Both of the last two fragrances are challenging, but I respect their uh, creations as uh, great fragrances. Just they rank low because I don't wear them as much. So the ones I wear more are at the top, if that makes sense. So Silver Oud at number 13 from the house of Amouage. Then moving on to the house of Nishane, first of two fragrances from Nishane. This is Nanshe. Nanshe is a powder bomb. If you like the idea of powder bomb, it's a uh, one for you to try. But this is a rosy patchouli powder bomb. It also kind of lightly reminds me a little bit of a Chypre style, perhaps it is. Because the rose patchouli combo really gives me that effect, that feeling of this particular fragrance and reminding me of Chypres. But I haven't really come across something that's this powdery that's full of rose and patchouli. But this is rose, powdery notes, flowers, patchouli, jasmine, musk, sandalwood, ylang ylang, carrot seeds. Carrot seeds are very, very powdery notes, uh, kind of acting like iris. So the, the fact that there's carrot seeds and powdery notes in addition to the carrot seeds, they don't mention iris. I'm assuming there's got to be iris in here. You'll know that this is an uber powdery fragrance wearing style. But I think it's inspired by makeup and powder that women put on and things like that. But I really like the fact that there's that patchouli rose thing in the background, which contrasts with the powdery makeup thing. So Nanshe at number 12. Uh, in this list. Moving on to number 11, a classic fragrance that was redone by Cecile Zorok, and the original was not by her. This is from the house of Jacques Fat, and we've got several fragrances from this house here. She did a bunch of them for uh, Jacques Fat. This is Green Water. Green Water is a fragrance my dad wore, but obviously not this version. This version, as I said, is created by Cecile Zorokian. and it's been redone. So this is a very fresh men's cologne style fragrance, but I think this particular version is marketed unisex. I believe the original was for men. I, got, I think it's, uh, yeah, correct. But this one is unisex. It's very aromatic and fresh and citrusy. Lots of mint here with bergamot. There's neroli, there's basil, there's oak moss, vetiver, musk, and mandarin. If you like the idea of citrus aromatic fragrances kind of leaning green and herbal you got to try green water it's it's classic you got to have it. it smells great it lasts decently but I like the fact that you can wear that really liberally in the summertime and that's when it really lasts decently I wouldn't pull that one out during the cold of the winter unless you want that up uplifting kind of uh, fresh aromatic citrusy green vibe so next up going to the house of Teo Cabanel this is Cafe Cabanel this is a very unique coffee fragrance uh, experience in that it's buttery, milky, and uh, creamy. So you've got cinnamon, you've got coffee, you've got tonka beans, you've got milk, you've got butter, heliotrope, vanilla, caramel, sandalwood, and musk. If you've ever kind of like scooped up butter, the wearing experience to me is that actual butteriness. So it's really like literally comes alive on you and you wear it like that. But definitely there's loads of coffee here. But once again, like Intense Cafe, it's not overdose of coffee. There's a lot of other things going on. So it's kind of like a coffee drink, but hot and buttery and milky creamy, if that makes sense. So kind of like one of those Starbucks coffee drinks that you get that they've added flavoring and creaminess and caramel and vanilla. That's the experience you get with this one. It's delicious, it's really delicious. It is spicy, it's warm and gooey. Uh, and then of course it's woody and musky as well. Cafe Cabanel at number 10. Going back to the house of uh, Jacques Fat once again, this is Curacao Bay, this one right here. You know, at a time, at one time I was not really into this fragrance, but I'm opening up to uh, marine fragrances. This one smelled too marine and fishy to me, but I don't know. 
uh, my nose is kind of getting used to it. It's also very, very tropical and beachy here. So it's frangipani, marine notes, musk, tangerine, lemons, orange, pettigran, ambergris, green notes, black currant, and woodsy notes. Great fragrance. Really did a great job with this one. Cecile Zorokian did. And again, at one time when the first four fragrances from Jacques Fott dropped, it was all four fragrances created by Cecile Zorokian. This was my least favorite, but now it's become a favorite of mine. I'm just really enjoying tropical tropical, floral, beachy, marine fragrances, and that's why I've ranked it pretty high. So this is Curacao Bay at number nine. All right, next moving on to the house of Amouage once again, and this is a video I discussed yesterday in my Amouage Exceptional x or Extracts Fragrances video. This is Epic 56 Woman, and once again, we discussed this in my interview for Royal Tobacco video with Cecile Zorokian. If you haven't caught that, please go catch it. So Epic 56 Woman is quite the spicy fragrance wearing experience. For me, this one um, does take me back to reminding me of fragrances uh, that my mom wore, like something like opium. It's a very, very spicy fragrance. I'm not saying this is smelling like it, but it's kind of giving me that vibe. It's very, very spicy with cumin, pink peppercorn, jasmine tea, centifolia rose, frankincense, oud, patchouli, sandalwood, amber, cinnamon, vanilla, and musk. So this one, I've never experienced the original Epic Woman in the green bottle. The, the 56 is so, so long lasting. It's really, really intense and very, very oily. It's an extract, but it is 56% oil. Traditionally, 20 to 30% is uh, in the parfum concentration. So you're getting a lot of uh, oil in here. So the longevity is great. Uh, but I, I do enjoy this one in that you can experience the rosiness, but there's a lot of spices going on with it. And then, of course, some smoke and oud and woods and earthy notes. Epic 56 Woman at number eight from the house of Amouage. Going back to the house of Jacques Fott once again, this is Belle Ombre, this one right here. This one is a great smelling amber fragrance, but she's done another one that I like a little more than this. It's coming up on the list soon. But Belle Ombre for me seems like the fusion of fresh notes and warm ambery notes together, you know? The combination is great. great. It works great. It's that kind of an amber that's not that difficult to wear. It features notes of amber, orris, along with leather and musk. There's vetiver and juniper and black pepper. You can totally pick up the black pepper. Black pepper to me is not a warm spice. It's a fresh spice. It freshens up the warmth in here from the amber. I believe there's also a bit of labdanum and vanillic touches in here as well. So it creates warmth against freshness and cool notes in, in comparison to a lot of warm notes. So Bellambra at number seven. And then at number six, it's Royal Tobacco, finally. Uh, if you haven't smelled it yet, please do. It's very unique to me. When you first spray this fragrance, it reminds me of Christmas. There's that kind of green Christmassy vibe with this one. And I believe it's all the aromatics and the anise and the licorice, kind of lightly boozy and green and fresh and spicy and aromatic. Eventually the tobacco kicks in in the heart. And then of course it becomes ambery. This is not an uber sweet tobacco fragrance. There's also the, the feature of frankincense in the notes for the top notes and also in the base notes, I believe, um, in this particular one. So it does get smoky. So it takes away from some of the Swedish notes in the fragrance because it features cardamom, frankincense, anise, licorice, basil, tobacco, prunol, which is a prune note or prune plum note, fenugreek, vanilla, peru balsam, benzoin, labdanum, and myrrh. So it's not the uber sweet tobacco fragrance wearing experience. So it's unique in that way. And it's also very resinous and balsamic and ambery. So this is Royal Tobacco at number six from the House of Amouage created by Cecile Zorokian. So moving on to the House of Javoy, and this is one of two fragrances from Javoy. And my list keeps changing. I'm sometimes liking one of the fragrances more than the other. So it's my mood. So both of these fragrances I really love from Javoy. And both of them have English names. And from what I remember when I spoke to Francois Hanin, the owner of Javoy, he said every time Cecile Zorokian makes a fragrance, they're going to have it uh, with um, an English name. So both of them have an English name, whereas the other uh, Javoy fragrances are all French names. And one thing, some of you keep uh, telling me that it's Javoy. Francois Hanin, the owner of Javoy, mentioned to me it's Javoy. So Javoy private label at five. This is an uber masculine 
fragrance. If you like masculine, very, very masculine fragrances, you gotta try this one. This is Vetiver Leather Patchouli Papyrus Sandalwood and Labanum. There's definitely a booziness here, but the vetiver is in your face. Lots of patchouli, it's very, very earthy. It's a little damp and moist and earthy, like you're digging the rootiness of the vetiver. Then there's the leather here, and then that papyrus is also very, very prominent. Really, really prominent, and for me, papyrus acts like the combination of woods, vetiver, patchouli, with a very, very distinct kind of uh, uh, barrel age kind of a smell. So it's very, very prominent here. That's why I kind of get a booziness with this one. And then uh, there's a little labanum in the dry down, which makes it for an ambery experience. And then of course, wood sandalwood. So private label at number five. Next going back to the house of Amouage, it's material. And uh, material is Amouage's vanillic fragrance. It's delicious. It's really, really delicious. And I love vanilla. Obviously, you guys know this. This is Tonka Beans, Vanilla, Patchouli, Benzoin, Incense, Gayak Wood, Oud, Labanum, Osmanthus, Elemi. This is a very complex fragrance. And I mentioned to, to Cecile that she does make complex fragrances. She did a very complex one here too. But I do prefer material a little more because it is a little sweeter. I felt like the tobacco is not sweet enough for me. And I really enjoyed the top and the heart notes in that fragrance. And then I wanted a little sweetness in the base, whereas I can get that here. So the, the, it's a great ambery, resinous, once again, balsamic, but a vanilla fragrance. Super delicious, perfect in the cold uh, winter months material from Amouage is at number four. And then this was kind of a toss up. It's kind of gotten a little, uh, Difficult to pick which one goes where. This is at number three, another Javoy fragrance, Remember Me. And I'm really digging this one lately because it's so milky and lactonic. Milky lactonic fragrances, I recently did a video, really craving milkiness, so coziness, comforting, relaxation, you know, chilling out at home and sipping on this kind of like milky tea experience and that's what this is. It's tea, milk, vanilla, cardamom, ginger, frangipani, woods, and bergamot. Yeah, it's a great combination of notes. Definitely lots of tea with milk. There's vanillic sweetness here. There's a pungent spicy, fresh spicy from cardamom and ginger. And then there's some tropical floral seed from frangipani. And then of course you've got some freshness and woodsy dry down, bergamot and woods. Really delicious. Remember me at number three. If you don't know that one, do check it out. Again, Five, four, and three could be tied and uh, moved around because I love them so much, but that's how I was feeling with the list today. At number two, going to the house of Mask Milano, this is Tango. So this is a fairly new fragrance for me and I really love it. And I love ambers as well. Not as much as vanilla, but I love ambers. And this is a spicy take on amber. It's got lots of cumin along with the amber and there's benzoin, cinnamon, tonka beans, cardamom, sandalwood, gayak wood, Turkish rose. There's a little bit of a presence of the rose here, not so much, but you combine the amber with benzoin and benzoin is a resin that's sweet, kind of vanilla. And then there's lots of spices here. See, I love the combination of spices with warm notes and then also, this also has warm spices, also has the fresh spices. The cardamom and the cumin against the amber is super delicious. And that's why I'm ranking it here at number two. It's Tango from the House of Mask Milano. Uh, do you guys know that house? Do let me know. Finally, do you know my number one? You probably know. It's Nishane's Ani. Yeah, it's vanilla once again. But this is once again contrasted with fresh spices. Ginger and cardamom against vanilla. Man, it's a great combination. Super, super sexy as well. So Nishane Ani features notes of vanilla, woods, sandalwood, ginger, cardamom, blackcurrant, bergamot, and pink pepper. Yeah, it's really long lasting. It's a really delicious fragrance. And I love the warmth of the vanilla with that fresh uh, zing and spice from the ginger and the cardamom here. It's fantastic. I love it. There was a time I felt like this kind of reminded me a little bit of um, the discontinued vanilla fragrance from Frederick Mall, but they're, they do remind me of one another, but they're different. This one has a lot more brightness, whereas the Frederick Mall, it's Dries, Dries Van Noten, has a lot of bitter medicinal touches. This one is fantastic, I really love it. So this is Nishane Ani at number one. What do you guys think about this list? How would you rank the fragrances here? And are you a fan of Cecile Zorokian's fragrances? What fragrances are missing? I know that she's got done a lot more. I don't have every single fragrance, obviously. Uh, recommend me some more so I can check them out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.
Last but not least, I'm throwing in one more Jacques Fab fragrance because I do have quite a bit of them, and this is Red Shoes. So this is a fragrance that kind of sort of reminds me of Rouge Trafalgar from Dior. Quite different, but then similar. This is very fruity and very fresh. It features notes of red berries, blackcurrant, grapefruit, rose, ginger, patchouli, aldehydes, and musk. It's very airy, clean, fruity, fresh, playful, young, energetic, vibrant kind of a fragrance. It's really fresh. It's, I think, perfect in the summer heat. Yeah. Really great, and you can totally uh, smell the uh, aldehydes in here as well. So Red Shoes is the bonus fragrance from uh, the house of Jacques Fat, and that's my video for you today. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Bye-bye.